name is Chris Murray. I am the Safety and Solutions Specialist for Ralston Hoekstrom, uh, concentrating specifically on the Warner line. Uh, today we're going to talk uh, Warner fall protection, specifically the three things regarding the new ANSI specs, uh, leading edge versus class two, and then uh, the SRL anchoring options for all of these new specs. Uh, before we get into it though, I'd just like to address a few things regarding how ANSI and uh, OSHA kind of operate together. Um, so most safety professionals that you guys deal with, your customers, are going to want their products to meet the newest or most stringent ANSI classifications. And that is what's now class one and class two. Um, but there's been some talk out there that the class A, B, and leading edge is no longer going to be OSHA compliant with the hard date here coming up in about six months. And I would just like to make sure everybody's aware that that is not accurate. Uh, while ANSI has a little bit more ability to change uh, specifications, classifications uh, much quicker, OSHA requires a literal act of Congress. So no matter what you're told or what you're hearing, um, the old product that's both on your shelf and sitting with your end user is still good as far as OSHA is concerned. All right. So now that that's been addressed, let's talk a little bit about the new ANSI specs. Um, in post-production, I believe you guys will be looking at a, uh, a nice sheet here, but essentially they have increased the weight on their testing. Uh, they've increased the fall distances and a few other minor things. Um, that's quite technical, not something that you'll necessarily need to know, uh, but probably good information for you. So class one um, has also replaced A and B. And with A and B, we had specific fall clearances, how quickly it's gonna catch the person falling. Class A being 24 inch, class B being 54 inch. Now in the new spec of class one, it's 42 inches. So you need to know, no matter what manufacturer you have, how quickly that class one product as it hits the market is going to catch you. Um, as far as Warner is concerned, anything that we have labeled as class one is going to catch you within 24 inches. Our class two product, when used in a class one, which we'll get into when we talk about the anchoring options, when used overhead in a class one application will also catch you in 24 inches. Okay, part of the reason that you don't see every manufacturer already meeting this new spec is a lot of them are having trouble doing it. Uh, Warner was the first to have it out, both in class one, class two. And the first thing you'll notice is that we have changed the uh, colors of our houses. So class one, blue to the sky. So anytime I'm anchored up above my D-ring. Class two, yellow, very cautionary. Be cautious with what you're doing, anchoring beneath the D-ring up to foot level. Okay, we've also changed the housings to include this very robust carrying handle. It's holding up very nice in the market. And we've also double recessed the housings. Okay, the importance of double recessing the housings around the labels is that you have to have your labels on your SRLs in order for them to be compliant. Okay, you gotta have the labels on it. This is one way to just make them last longer. Increasing the, the longevity of the labels increases the length of life of the product in the field. So, concentrating specifically on the class two now, which is going to be used interchangeably here with leading edge. When do we need to use that? Okay, so anytime I am anchored beneath my D-ring, okay, so D-ring and all the way down to my feet, I have to use a leading edge or, or now a class two product. The other time I have to use it is let's say I am anchored above my head here, but my line is gonna come into contact with an edge, any edge. And I have these three pieces of material here because Warner is still the only one with their class two products included to test over three different materials, both steel, precast concrete, and BDEC. So if your customer is spending the money on a leading edge or a class two product and their edge is concrete, you should make sure that it's tested over that. To get the leading edge or class two spec, right now you only have to test over steel and that's what most manufacturers do. Warner just takes it one step above and beyond and tests over very common materials that are found on the job sites throughout this country. 
Hey Chris, why is it why is it important to test over the over the three? I mean, what is leading edge? Okay. So leading edge is literally when your line is going to come into contact with this edge and you fall over the side. And the amount of forces that can be generated here as it's catching you causes a potential shear issue. So literally as you fall over, it can just snap. So if you're using the last one over this edge, this secondary shock absorber is going to alleviate the pressure on that edge and prevent a shear scenario. Now that I believe we've seen the video of a class one failing in a class two application, the, the leading edge application, let's talk about why I always recommend class twos. So the class two is as close to the easy button as your customer can get. The guys in the field who are requesting this product and the guy who's pushing it out to multiple job sites, maybe even hundreds of guys, doesn't know how they're gonna use it exactly. This is the most versatile option, okay? You can use it tie it up to your feet all the way up above your head and it will still function the way that you need it to. So the way that this will work is when above head, it'll catch you within those 24 inches because you've eliminated the free fall. So the forces applied to this secondary shock absorber, it will not open up all the way. And that's how you reduce that complete free fall and catch distance to under 24 inches. We also have them available in personal length, so this is a six footer. As you'll notice, it's also made of, of a webbing. It is a Kevlar webbing, um, but it is designed for a leading edge application. What I do wanna point out, as I've seen some people misuse it, is that this gold pin is designed to ensure that it stays with the user. So this secondary shock absorber you see here is inside this pack. So you'll see it's designed to go down the back side of the, the webbing strapped to it to prevent any kind of walk down as you want to keep that D-ring up high. But the gold pin is designed to go behind the D-ring under the webbing. So it's going to go in here. Okay, when sometimes I see some guys putting it through the D-ring, please don't do that. It's got to go underneath the webbing, under the D-ring. You don't use the D-ring when you're using one of these. Also, this is not any kind of trauma strap. Please do not unzip it and take it out as it is designed to be the secondary shock absorber in the event of a fall, but it has to stay with the user. Same for our eight foot cable units. Um, they're just a little bit heavier and that's why we have the web in order to decrease the weight, keep the worker happy, and then therefore more productive. So I always recommend class two or leading edge whenever possible, unless they have a very fixed application that they know what the guy's doing and there will not be an edge involved. But in most construction, 99% of the time, I'm seeing leading edge applications.
Thank you, Chris. Thank you for your time.